Hey everybody, so today I want to talk a little bit about publishing events um, from Hyperledger Fabric. So I know this is a pretty um, common use case and something that you would like to use within your front end and your client applications. So why don't we go ahead and check out the APIs and what we need to implement in terms of sending events to our client application. So let's go dive into the code. All right, um, so what we have here, um, if you just go ahead and type in Hyperledger Fabric Node SDK, um, the, the first thing that pops up is this uh, Fabric SDK for Node.js. Um, and here we see the release 1.4. Um, and what it says is that it's essentially, you know, Fabric Network is this new 1.4 API in this package that's useful for submitting transactions for a smart contract. And it's also good for querying a smart contract. Um, what it doesn't say here is about uh, using it for monitoring events. Um, it says to use the Fabric Client. But if you go into tutorials, you'll see that there is actually a way to listen to events with this Fabric Network package. So that's what we're going to do today. And I'm going to show you just how easy it is to do that. So let's go ahead and click on this um, on this tutorial. So in this tutorial, we have um, you know listening to events, and the overview shows us that there are three types of events: um, contract events, there is transaction events, and there are block events. So I think contract events are super useful because you get to really specify exactly what goes into that event. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at a code example first. Um, so. I have this um, auction events code pattern, um, and this was built, um, and I've just recently updated it to use this 1.4 release. Um, and um, inside of the smart contract, if you click on the contract folder, click inside lib, um, you go to auction.js. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Um, and on, um, if, if you go into auction.js, this is our main, you know, extends contract. It's using this fun fabric contract API. And Essentially, in here, um, we can see a trade event. So, um, in our start bidding function, um, we have this trade event. And what we do is we define this event and we call set event on this, um, on this event. And what we have is, you know, we have this, the type of the event, who's the owner, what's the ID, what's the description, what's the status, what's the amount, what's the buyer ID. Essentially, we can put a, any sort of information from our smart contract into this event. And when we call stub.setEvent, um, this is using the Fabric shim. So if, again, if we uh, look for what package this is using. Um, ba -ba so if you go into Fabric shim, you'll see that set event is here. What we have now is we have this event. So we've set the event, right? And within our client application, we have to look for this specific event. And we have to set an event listener to look for this event that's emitted. So, um, starting with our contract events, um, we have a really nice um, we have a really nice code example here, and it shows that the first thing we have to do, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit um, because I'm pretty uh, I have pretty bad eyesight, especially for looking at computers all day. Um, anyways, so I'm going to zoom it in for everyone. Um, so we have the contract events. Um, we have this gateway. That's the first thing that we always have to do. So in my code. Um, I'm going to show you. So this is again. Uh, this is just a Git clone of the auction events repo. Um, and then, if you look in the contract, this is where the contract is. And you know, we have the uh, trade event. If we look um, right here, again, the trade event. And if we looked at our Fabric SDK, we see that first we need to uh, create a new gateway. And then we need to connect um, with the connection profile. So let's look at that. So within our actual contract events file, this is our. Um, our uh, client project, you see that our connection profile is this my channel auction profile.json. So if we look inside here, um, that will be this is the Kubernetes pod um, that is is hosting the peer, and this is the port that the peer is on three zero zero nine seven. The certificate authority is on a different port three two seven three nine. This is all using the IBM Kubernetes service. Um, just note that if you want to do this locally, you can definitely do so, and you just have to change this. Uh, connection profile to have the local version of that. Um, and if you want to see what that would look like, it looks like this. Um, so you know you have local host instead of these Kubernetes components. So um, going back to the contract events, um, now that we have uh, connected to our connection profile, we get the network for my channel, um, we get the contract for auction, 
And this is where we actually add the contract listener. So the contract listener, um, if we look at it, we, let's do this. So you can see here, um, add contract listener takes the listener name, a callback, and it has the options. So the listener name is just gonna be my contract listener. And then this is the most important part. The contract listener has to be listening for a specific event that set event um, emits. So ours is called the trade event. Um, if it wasn't called that, um, it would not work. So let's go ahead and try this now. All right, um, so now I've just changed a couple things um, to uh, connect to a different connection profile. Now um, we should be all ready to go. Um, so essentially what we're doing is we're checking for this trade event. Um, now we're going to submit these transactions. Um, and if you recall, um, the offer, uh, the start bidding, the offer, and the close bidding functions have this trade event. So we can see that really quick. If we go into contract and we go into auction, we look for trade event, um, we'll see that it's within the offer function. Um, it's within the close bidding function down here. Uh, see this trade event in the end auction for the close bidding. Um, and then I think it was the start bidding too. Start bidding has this, yeah, start auction trade event. So um, we have these three events. So each time we submit the offer, the offer and the close bidding and the start bidding, we should get a trade event. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and see them in action. Um, let's, uh, let's get to it. So we do this, we run the script. Um, it's going to start uh, by first looking for the wallet path. It'll look for a wallet. Inside our wallet, you see this app admin2. Um, so this is what we're using, what I'm using currently to sign all of my transactions. Once it checks for the wallet to make sure everything exists, it connects to our network using the Kubernetes, and then it's listening to the events. So let's see what happened here. Um, essentially what happened is we connected, we had the start trade event, we can see that the type was the start auction, you know, we have the description, we see the end of the trade event now, and then we have this offer event, which is great, we have another offer, um, and then we see the end auction, and we see that um, um, L1 should uh, one because the bidding price was 100, and now it's sold. Um, so that's it. So we saw the uh, contract events. Uh, so that was great. Now um, let's move on to the block events. Um, so the block events are a little bit different. Um, the block events are here. Um, and if you want to look in all block events but don't want to replay, uh, this is how to do it. So we have this network dot at block listener. Um, so we can look at that again. Um, so yeah, we have the add block list. Uh, yeah, so we have the add block listener again. Um, we are looking for the listener name, and then we have the callback. Um, so nothing too um, too tough there. Um, and again, if we look at the block events, we see that we have to be listening on the network. So that's what we're looking here. So again, there's a pretty subtle difference here in that um, the listener is looking for the network, and we're adding the block listener to the network. Whereas here, we're adding the listener to the contract. Okay. So that's the difference here. Um, so let's go ahead and check this script now. So we have the block event script. Um, again, we're connecting to these uh, to this. I need to change this really quick, but this is where you connect. Um, this is where you connect uh, to your uh, connection profile. This is where all the components, the peer certificate authority, are listening. Um, again, app admin two. I need to change this just because this is the way I configured my network, and we should be okay now. Um, so again, um, if you don't really understand what's in a block, um, I have a pretty nice tutorial within my auction events um, block listener. So, okay, so within my actual auction events um, in the ninth emit block events um, section, you can go down and it says to learn more about the specifics of what is included inside a block, read this page. Um, so that will take you to the Hyperledger Fabric, read the docs. So blocks are split up into three main sections. First is the block header, second is the block data, and third is the block metadata. The block header is has the previous pointer to the previous block hash. It has the current block number. So the first block is the genesis block starting at block number zero. Then you increment by one for every block. And then you have the current block hash, um, which is taking a hash of all the transactions that are listed in the current block. 
the block data will have what's written inside of those transactions, and the block metadata will have um, some information as like who signed the block um, and what time was this block written. So let's go ahead and check this out in code. So um, we have our block listener, and you see here that our, uh, we're listening specifically to the network. So we're listening to a specific channel. Um, in this particular um, instance, it's called my channel, and we have the block header. We have, and we have use util.inspect just to um, parse the JSON, and we have a depth of five. So we check the block header, then we check the block data. That should show us some of the transactions, and then we show the block metadata, which show us uh, some of the different um, timestamps. So let's go ahead and run this script. So go ahead and do node um, block events. Awesome. So the, the script stopped uh, running. So essentially what's happening is that every time we do a submit transaction, there should be a new block being added. Um, and you can customize this. So the block batch size is how many transactions are within a block. Right now it's just one, um, but you can customize it to have multiple transactions. So what happened here is that for each submit transaction, we should have a new block. Um, and we can go ahead and check these blocks. All right, um, so we've ran the script, um, and what we have here is we have the block header, and we're going to start with uh, block number 438. So we have the previous hash, um, so this is um, the hash that is linking to block number 437, and then we have the current uh, block number 438's data hash. Um, so you may be thinking, oh, is this, um, so is this previous hash 580 going to be the same as uh, block number 437's a data hash? The answer is no. So the data hash is not exactly the same as the previous hash. Um, the current block hash takes the hash of the data hash, and it also adds in, um, yeah, so it's also the block number, the previous block hash, and the current block data hash. So it's it adds in a, 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 other things as well as, as just the data. So that's why this previous hash um, is not going to correspond to the data hash of block number 437. And you can read more on this uh, stack over overflow uh, post. Okay, now moving to the uh, start of the block data, we saw the header. Um, now we're moving to the actual block data. This is um, where we can see the timestamp again. We can see the signature. Um, we can see the payload and um, the MSP ID and more, more things such as the data. Then we have the metadata. Um, so the metadata, we have uh, more of the signatures. Um, and yeah, that's more or less it. All right, so we've done the block events. And now let's turn our attention to the uh, transaction events. Um, so we have the transaction event script. Um, if we look at the PowerPoint, you can see um, transaction event listener is going to look for a specific transaction. So um, it's going to be a little bit different, but the same thing again. We're check using our wallet. Um, we're connecting the connection profile, and we're using this contract. Um, but the difference here is we do a create transaction. So it's similar to submit transaction, but we actually create the transaction, and we put a commit listener on that actual transaction object that we created. Um, so now, um, once we have this uh, listener, once the transaction is actually committed, um, we'll get a sort of statics and a status. We'll get the block height and the transaction ID. Um, so we only have one transaction here, and it's the ad seller, and then we submit that, that transaction, and then we, su we should see the info there. Let's go ahead and try it out. Awesome. Um, so you see the transaction is committed. Here is the um, transaction ID. Here's the status. It's valid, and the block height to be 439. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, all we're doing is, is getting some sort of status in the transaction ID um, every time we actually commit a s transaction. And you have to note that um, there can be multiple transactions inside of a block, so this is even more granular. So um, that was pretty much it for me today. Um, all you need to know is that you know the transaction uh, listener, um, you have to do you actually do have to create this transaction. Um, there's also the block listener, which is listening to a specific channel. And then there's also the contract listener, which is listening for a specific event emitted from your smart contract. So these are the some of the ways that you can monitor your blockchain network, and hopefully you can find um, some use out of this tutorial. All of the code is online, um, and you can use it as you want. And um, if you want to do this everything locally, um, all you have to do is is uh, change this IBP connection to have kind of like this local fabric connection.json, um, and all of that should be um, within the GitHub page uh, right here. Um, 
all you have to do is uh, look inside this application folder and you should see the wallet um, with the credentials and then you should also see the local fabric connection um, right there. Yeah, um, that's pretty much it. Much for listening and see you next time.